Today we're going to look at the 425 air-cooled ice maker. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take apart the evaporator. We're going to check out the bearings and see how they are. So what we're going to do first is we want the, the water to be out of the machine so we can go ahead and we can press the clean button while the machine is powered up. Uh, that will go ahead and open up our purge valve and, and drain out all the water from the machine. In this case, I've, I've got things disassembled for clarity. But uh, let's go ahead and, and look at the, the top bearing on the machine. This is our insulation. Take off the top insulation. The, uh, the jacket is held on by Velcro. We'll take that off. And we expose our V-band clamps. So we've got a couple little protective caps over the ends. And we're going to take these nuts off of here with a deep wall 7 16 socket. All right, so I've loosened up my V-band clamp. You want to take the screw so it's almost all the way off. You can spread the V-band clamp off, take it off the top of the upper bearing. Something to keep in mind, we have a sticker here that says, hey, make sure that this clamp is tightened to 70 inch pounds. It's very important that this uh, V-band clamp is tight. As the machine's making ice, it's always pushing up under the underside of the top bearing. We, by making sure that that V-band clamp is tight, we make sure that the, uh, the machine doesn't, doesn't push itself apart. So the top bearing, as we take that out, sometimes this can be stuck on there pretty good. If it has been a long time since you've cleaned the machine, you could have a bunch of scale that's preventing you from, from getting the top bearing off. What you'd want to do is we have machined in to the bearing this upper flange area and you can take a punch or drift a, a, a nice <laughs> a screwdriver and tap on the bottom of this all the way around and work this bearing up and off of there what we don't want you to do we don't want you to pry in between these two machine surfaces you could possibly nick the stainless steel and then we won't sit down correctly all the way Another cautionary note, if you are having problems getting the upper bearing off, we don't want you to come up with the idea of removing the clamp and then trying to make ice with the machine, okay? We don't want ice pushing this thing out. What happens is, underneath here, we have what's called the ice compression loop. The ice compression loop extends into the outlet port of the evaporator. And if you tried making ice without the V-band clamp on the bearing, there's a possibility that the whole auger could come up, you can damage the compression loop, it could score the inside of the evaporator and that wouldn't be a good thing. So if you do have a, uh, a stuck bearing on the top, you know, number one, make sure that the, the uh, machine's at room temperature. When the evaporator is cold, it's going to be squeezing the top of the bearing. So room temperature, and then tap on the upper ring around the perimeter there to work the bearing off. All right, so this is our ice compression loop. As the auger turns and pushes the ice upwards from the evaporator, the ice follows the loop around to where it goes through the exit port and then into our ice compression nozzle. All right, so here's the ice compression loop. It has a couple of small notches that fit into the evaporator outlet port. It is possible to put this in upside down. So it will go in upside down. If you were to do that by mistake, it would start to make ice, the ice would come around, pack up on the inside of that compression loop, and the machine would go off on high amps very, uh, very quickly. Uh, you'll probably only make that mistake once. All right, so here's our auger. The auger is machined out of a single piece of 304 stainless steel. Uh, it has some little serrations up at the top here. What those serrations are for is it helps to give the ice a push, to push it out of the evaporator as it's turning around. All right, to check the condition of our, of our uh, top bearing, we're going to want to use the auger to do that. So we're going to put the auger onto the bearing, and we can use, use the auger to feel the condition. Now right now, this is a brand new 
top bearing. It's, it's very stiff. As this gets broken in, it'll spin a lot more easily. You'll be able to spin this around on here very, very easily. Uh, what you're looking for is any cracking, crunching, flat spots that might indicate that the bearing is, is starting to get worn out. But you definitely want to use the auger on here so that you have some leverage to be able to check the condition of the bearing. All right, on the top of the bearing, we have an O-ring. All right, there's a small little O-ring up here that we've added in the last couple years. That just helps to keep any additional water or scale uh, sealed into the evaporator. The evaporator has always had a chamfer up in the top edge here, and that O-ring just sits right into that chamfer with the, uh, the V-band clamp on and, and seals it up very nicely. All right, on the 425, the compression nozzle now has an O-ring in it. So we loosen up our set screw on the top here. I'm going to remove my two drain lines from the nozzle. And then I can slide the nozzle off. So the nozzle now has an O-ring on the inside. It's sealed up really nicely. Also another, another uh, change from our older design, our set screw now goes on to a flange, okay? It goes on to this, this shoulder here of the, of the outlet. And as you tighten this down, it tightens onto that shoulder. The screw no longer goes down into the path of the ice. All right, I've loosened up the V-band clamp on the lower side of our evaporator. And we can rock the evaporator back and forth a little bit and lift that off of the lower bearing. So our refrigerant lines are designed so that there's enough flex in those so that you can easily pull this off so that we can get at the lower bearing without having to worry about damaging the refrigerant lines. All right, to remove our lower bearing, we have a set screw that goes through the cup and holds the bearing in place. I'm gonna use my screwdriver without the bit on it. I'm gonna loosen up that set screw, and then I can take the bearing out. All right, so I've loosened up my set screw, and we can take our lower bearing out. Now this one again, this is a brand new machine. It comes out very easily. If this happens to be a machine that's, that's kind of old or really scaled up, what you can do is wrap a, a rag around this or a towel and take a big pair of channel locks and get onto this and work this off of here. So the bearing will come out. All right, and notice there's a couple of roll pins on either side. These roll pins fit into corresponding notches down in the cup and then also notches that are up in the underside, the, the lower section of the evaporator. All right, so I've got the, uh, the lower bearing out. Um, I've wiped off some of the grease that's on here. Uh, the grease that we use is a mobile FM222 grease. Uh, you, can, you can find that in our, in our service manual, uh, the grease that we use. There's also an O-ring that's going to be down inside the cup. And what that O-ring does is it sits on the bearing about like that. And what it does is it, try, it keeps condensation from getting into the bearings. Okay, for checking the condition of our lower bearing, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this on a flat surface. We're gonna push down on the bearing as we turn it. Now this bearing is a tapered roller bearing, very similar to the front wheel bearings that are on your, on your car. And it's loaded coming down from the top, you know, the, as the ice is pushing on the auger, it's pushing down from the top. And so again, you want to force down on this and turn it. And again, you're checking for any cracking, crunching, or flat spots that might indicate a bad bearing. Also, if you've got a bearing that's, that's quite old or has been quite neglected, you can look in and, and, and see possibly some of the rollers might be damaged on the inside there. But, but definitely use some force pushing down on this to check its condition. All right, so reassembling, we've got our O-ring. We're gonna put that down into the O-ring groove. Again, that O-ring is what's going to seal out condensation from getting into our, into our bearings. We, we can put some fresh food grade grease down in the well. 
down in there where the the output shaft comes out. And this is what we call our condensate condensate shield. That's going to go down over the output shaft. Try to help keep some of the cold from the evaporator from making it down back down into the gear motor. So we've got our bearing. Put that on to the output shaft, and then we're going to rotate it around so that our roll pins line up with the notches, corresponding notches. And what we're going to do is we're going to push down on the on the bearing as we tighten up the set screw. So what we want to do is, is make sure that that O-ring is seated very well by putting force down on the bearing as we tighten up this set screw and lock it into place. Alright, so our bearing is back in place. We can take our V-band clamp, get that situated, get our evaporator back down onto the base. We're making sure that our, our notches line up with the roll pins and then we can tighten the V-band clamp back up. Again, you want to make sure that the clamps are lined up with the back of the machine so that the insulation will go back on correctly. Alright, in tightening up the V-band clamp, we, uh, we've said that we want to make sure that this clamp is tightened to 70 inch-pounds. If you don't happen to have an uh, inch-pound torque wrench handy, uh, the rule of thumb that we've always used is our three squeak rule. So as you tighten this guy up, tighter that gets it starts to squeak and so we're gonna give it three good squeaks and that should be really close to 70 inch pounds alright so we're gonna put our auger back in make sure that that drops in all the way we've got our ice compression loop and again making sure it's in the proper direction it's looking like a, a six and not a nine. So there's the proper orientation. We can put our top bearing on and then put our V-band clamp on. All right, well again, we want to make sure that the V-band clamp, both V-bands are in the same direction and lined up with the back of the machine. Tighten this up again to 70 inch pounds or three squeaks. Alright, so we're going to put our ice compression nozzle back on. Uh, we, can, we can lubricate the O-ring a little bit with some food grade grease. That's going to snap onto there. And then we tighten up the set screw that's on the top. Now also we want to make sure that all of our drain lines are on. So we've got the overflow drain going onto the top. And then our drain going on to the bottom which comes back to our water reservoir. Alright, I've worked the insulation jacket back on. Just make sure again that your, your V-band clamps are in the correct direction. And we can seal it all back up here. And, and the whole purpose of our new insulation that we're doing is to cut down on condensation. So there's a lot more insulation that we've had in the past.